Okay. I think that people might be able to see me better now. Okay. If you can see me, then that sounds good. Um, so as, as I said, so we actually went into the HR department and, uh, yeah, we clearly identified our what and our why, and then we allowed those opportunities for ownership within the how so that we could actually own our agile manifesto. And so this was a situation where the people or the process was driving that was taking ownership. And so by making these slight adjustments and using our tools from our agile toolbox, we actually were able to um, put the people back into, uh, back into the driver's seat of this, um, of this applicant experience. And actually what we found is after a few months, actually um, about six months of implementing these different tools, our applicant processing time was cut from three to four months to three to four weeks. And so this dramatically improved, dramatically improved, not only our ability to properly staff our teams in an appropriate time frame, but it also created a better applicant experience for all of our applicants as well and all of our candidates. Now, applying HR, or sorry, applying Agile doesn't have to be just within corporate or uh, just within uh, an HR department or an accounting department, but uh, I actually was able to implement Agile again in a nonprofit organization, right? So we don't just have to be uh, within corporate and within different departments. I was working with a nonprofit organization and we found that the team had really a huge heart for people and wanted to change the world, but their projects were overwhelming. And uh, see what started out as seven, eight, or nine projects would expand into, I believe it was 47 different projects that were going on simultaneously. And so what happened is there was a disconnect. There was very distracted focus. No one was really focusing on one specific project. We were multitasking and working on a ton of different projects and not actually accomplishing or finishing any of them. And so we asked the question, what do we want to do and why do we want to do it? All right. So we clearly identified what we were trying to do and why that was important. Uh, what this particular uh, nonprofit was trying to do is they were wanting to invest in um, invest in the youth in the community. Why they were wanting to do that is because the youth is the future, and so they were, and so they were uh, really trying to find ways to best serve the youth in that particular community. And so what we did is we took all of these projects, all of these projects, and we put them into a backlog. As so we took all of these projects, we said, okay, we are doing a whole lot right now. So let's take it all, put it into a backlog, pull out one or two, no more than three at a time. And we actually had sprints, very similar to a design sense, where we had sprints. And then at the end of a project, we were able to have a retrospective and ask ourselves the question, what went well in this project and what can we do a little bit better? Like I said at the beginning of this presentation, according to Tuckman, uh, Tuckman's cycle of a team, the more that we have these feedback loops and the quicker that we have these feedback loops, we're able to go back to that storming phase to establish better norms to perform at a higher level. Whenever we took all of these projects and put them into a backlog and then designed sprints, we actually were able to have quicker feedback loops. We were able to make the adjustments so that every time that we started a new project, we were operating off of more um, comprehensive and more effective 
norms. This was really significant because our team, the nonprofit, was able to join, uh, they were able to finish more projects. They were able to build momentum. Imagine having 47 different projects going on at the same time and not accomplishing any of them. This dramatically affects momentum and morale. But by putting them into sprints, they were able to see the wins. Not only that, they were able to have quicker feedback loops through, um, through effective retrospectives. So whenever they went back to their backlog and pulled out a few more projects to design into, uh, to uh, implement in a sprint, they were able to be more effective and actually have a bigger impact on the community. Again, this is the same thing as we are still kicking the ball. We're just altering slightly by identifying our what and our why, and then asking the question, how can we take back ownership? Again, a lot of times people, um, one of the biggest challenges to implementing Agile is having a little bit of pushback and having a little bit of struggle with buy-in. So we first ask the question, what are, you, what are your challenges and how can, if there's anything, are there tools in the Agile toolbox? I don't need every tool. I don't need everything all at once. Are there a few tools that I can use from the Agile toolbox to apply to your challenge today that will allow you to take back ownership so that you can have a bigger impact on, uh, on your team and on your organization? Now, I've given you an, an example of how we implemented Agile in a corporate setting, how we've implemented it in a nonprofit setting. We actually also implemented this in a holiday setting. See, uh, uh, last year, wow, just a year ago, um, I actually had the opportunity to go with a group of people. We were from all over the United States, had very different professions, came from very different backgrounds, and we decided to go for uh, on a holiday to Thailand for a month to increase understanding about a new place, increase understanding from others, and then increase understanding from each other. Uh, so it was a huge uh, opportunity for us to really increase our learning and understanding. Now, you can imagine with flights, with hotels, with a lot of people from all over the United States trying to get us all in one place and to create some sort of plan, it took a lot of planning. In fact, I call this my biggest planning feat ever. We were uh, booking flights, or I was booking flights. I was actually the one planning this. Uh, booking flights from uh, Kansas to California to Oklahoma to Texas to Virginia. And so we are from all over the United States. And so it could be very easy in this situation to have the plan dictate everything that we were doing. But... We could not have the plan dictate everything that we were doing, especially whenever we missed our flight. Or, no, we didn't miss our flight. We actually missed our train. Uh, we did, never did miss our flight, but we did miss our train and we did miss our bus. Um, and in both of those situations, we had to respond to change. See, I put people and I marked it out. I put change. We have to change it rather than having the plan dictate. And so... What we did so that the plan was not dictating the entire trip is we actually had a stand-up every single morning. And we clarified again, what do we want to do today? Okay, we're in, um, uh, we're in Bangkok today. What do we want to do today? And why do we want to do that? What is, why is this important? All right, so we would have a clear stand up. We would also, um, so we would clarify what we were going to do, what we were looking forward to, how we could help each other out. Uh, maybe someone had a, a bad sunburn or maybe, you know, someone's legs were really tired. So we would talk about, okay, how are you feeling? What adjustments do we need to make? What are, in light of these adjustments, what are we trying to do? Why is this important? And how can we best set ourselves up for success moving forward? And then throughout the day, 
we would go through, uh, go through the process. Uh, we would be exploring temples. We would, uh, we went to an elephant sanctuary. You know, we did a variety of different things. And then at the end of the day, we got together and we had a retrospective and we said, okay, what went well, what went well in our uh, adventure today? What should we repeat? What should we stop doing? What changes do we need to make? And we had this conversation every single night. And so even on a personal level, we actually, from the beginning of our trip to the end of our trip, altered personal uh, behaviors, uh, approaches, communication styles. And we were able to make those adaptations in real time. Rather than, an alternative could have been to go through the entire trip and then at the end of the trip, and we did have a massive retrospective at the end, but the retrospective at the end of the trip was really just a summation with some new insights, but really mostly a summation of all of the many retrospectives that we had done throughout every single day. The challenges that we brought up in our massive retrospective at the end was somewhat known because we had had stand-ups at the beginning of every single day, and we brought up challenges. We brought up ways that we could adjust. And because of this, we were able to make quicker adjustments in real time. Again, we asked the question, what do we want to do? Why do we want to do it? What are and how can we take back ownership to best achieve these goals? What challenges are you facing? Why are you facing them? What tools in the Agile toolbox can I pull out to actually help take back ownership? And so going, and so I've said this conversation a few different times throughout this presentation. So I really want it to sink in. This is the way that you can format your conversation whenever implementing Agile. You don't have to use every single tool of Agile all at once. Start out with one or two. Build momentum there. Ask follow-up questions. Increase understanding that way. And then and then you can move forward and build off of those slow, uh, of those small wins. Now, whether it be HR or in, in the corporate setting of actually bringing, uh, actually taking back ownership of your processes, uh, people actually taking ownership of processes, whether it actually be um, a nonprofit where you are truly taking ownership of the projects, or whether it be a holiday that you're going on and you want to respond to change of a plan that you already own, it can be easy to hear all of these words. There's a lot of vocabulary and a lot of vernacular that we use in Agile. And it can be easy to hear a lot of these words and want to go in and implement them right away. Again, first thing that I do is I have a conversation first. And I ask the questions, what do you want to do? Why is that important? And I'll give you one other tool. I also have a proactive conversation. See, sometimes whenever we are in this implementation phase, especially we, we learn this from design thinking, going from ideation to implementation, there can be frustration and there can be conflict. There can be misunderstandings. And so whenever I'm having this initial conversation, I also bring up a proactive conversation. Now, a proactive conversation goes a little something like this. At some point in this conversation, at some point in this working relationship, at some point in this project, there is going to be conflict. There might be misunderstanding. There's going to be tension. There's going to be heat. And so while the emotions are low now, let us proactively discuss how we are going to handle that situation 
whenever it inevitably arises. And this says a couple things. First, it normalizes conflict. It actually, uh, see, sometimes people are hesitant to bring up conflict. Uh, they're hesitant to bring up tension within teams because they don't want to admit that a problem actually exists, that a challenge is actually there. But by having a proactive conversation, you're saying, okay, it's actually okay for you to bring this up. We want to address it. The other thing is that sometimes people are hesitant to bring up tension because there's a sense of ambiguity of how that present, uh, of how that discussion is going to go. But by having a proactive conversation, you're saying, this is the game plan. This is how the conversation is going to go. You're actually saying, uh, you're actually laying out your script. And not all scripts are going to be the same. So I encourage you to get very specific, to get strategic uh, as you are having these conversations initially, as you are discussing and introducing Agile into a new team or into a new department. I actually have this conversation whenever I start a new project, whenever I um, am getting ready to implement Agile into a new team, into a new department, or if I am working with a new client. And in all of these scenarios, the, these can be triggers for you to have this conversation. It creates an opportunity for you to have a proactive conversation so that you can address any tension, maybe any hesitation, uh, maybe any of, okay, how is this tool actually going to, um, how is this tool that you're introducing, how is that going to help me achieve my challenges, uh, overcome my challenges? Having this conversation is a quick five minute discussion, but it can lead to really powerful results. Now, as I said, it can be very easy to hear all of these different words, all of the different vernacular of Agile, and want to come into a department, come into a team, and begin using all of these words, saying, backlog, sprint, retrospective, stand up, we got this! Because we know that these are really good words. But it actually reminds me of uh, whenever I was coaching football and whenever I was coaching soccer. And I had a young lad named Achinthia. And Achinthia was about six years old and he came on to his first day of football and he came running out onto the field and he began yelling, pass, pass, pass. And I noticed that Achinthia was yelling pass even whenever the other team had the ball. And Achinthia was yelling pass even whenever he was miles away from the action. And Achinthia was yelling pass even whenever he had the ball. And so he was running with the ball going pass, pass, pass. And so I looked at Achinthia and I said, Achinthia, why are you yelling pass? And he looked up at me and he said, Masamba ma'am, I do not know what it means. I only know it is a football word. And sometimes I hear leaders, I, I hear people coming into Agile and they sound a little bit like my friend Achinthia, yelling, Retrospectives, stand ups, we got this, woo! Because we're yelling a lot of different words. And we know that they're good words that can lead to big goals. But if we're in the wrong position, if we're miles away from the action, or even if we have the ball and we don't know in which direction we're going, then saying these words are not only ineffective, but they're actually detrimental to the overall communication within our team. But if we first take the time to come into a team and clearly identify what challenges teams are facing and why they are facing them, 
And if we take the time to know the tools that are in our agile toolbox, it could be a Kanban board. It could be stand-ups. It could be retrospectives. It could be sprints. It, it could be a variety of different things in your agile toolbox. And if we take the time to know what's in our toolbox and know when to apply each of these tools, then we'll be able to be in a position to apply each of these tools to create small wins, to build momentum so that our teams can become more agile, so that our teams can become quicker to respond to change, to take ownership of processes, to have working software, having working products over a comprehensive documentation. And we'll be in a position to yell pass and to receive the ball and to move forward and to score really, really big goals. I want to thank you all so much for having me today. I apologize that I was a few minutes late, but uh, my name is Amber Vandenberg. I would love to connect. Uh, I'm the only Amber Vandenberg on any social media. Uh, so if you want to find me on LinkedIn or on uh, Twitter, uh, my handle is my last name and my first name. Uh, and I left a few minutes left for time. If anyone has any questions about how they... Um, about how to actually implement Agile within different teams outside of development. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, and just, yeah, and, and if you guys ever do have any questions, uh, for sure, this, these are, these concepts, uh, I know that I spoke about them in a variety of different industries and a variety of different departments. Uh, that's because these concepts of Agile uh, broken down to, into its most basic form is um, is the ability to be agile and to move. And they can apply in a variety of different ways. Uh, notice I didn't necessarily put working software. I just put working. Uh, is the product that we have actually working? Is the service that we have actually working? And um, breaking this down into its most simplest form uh, is a very simple way to help overcome the jargon uh, and the common misunderstandings within uh, these agile concepts. All right, so every good speaker has some good outro music, so I'm going to go ahead and play that now. Don't worry, it's royalty-free. You guys have any questions? Thank you, guys.
Thank you so much. All right, with that, I'm going to I'm going to part I'm going to part ways. So, thank you guys so much for today. Um I hope that you have a wonderful week, have a wonderful rest of the year. Uh we only have a few weeks left. So uh yeah, I'd love to keep in touch, love to stay in touch. Uh but other than that, you have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye. Three, two.